For the campaign mode, it lasts anywhere between 8 to like 15 hours. It's a very long game. I was very surprised at how well Capcom introduced new characters and how well they flowed within the storyline. I also was very captivated by the team up of Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield again. I can't tell you how much I love Jill Valentine and I finally get to play with her again. It was very fun, and the story has a few twists and turns that make you, ooh, yes, a very deep and long story. The way. The gameplay elements of this game it is a great cross between old Resident Evil and new Resident Evil. Resident Evil 6 and the older ones. Resident Evil 4, actually, I like this game better than that game. The elements are all right. Some parts of Resident Evil 4 were a little off. They were a little so much action over the, pa over the top. And this game is back to the horror roots. The whole time you are on a ship, and this ship, it's, it's a cruise liner. It's like Titanic. So this ship, there's so many different areas you can you can go into. You can backtrack, get new weapons. It, it plays a lot like the older Resident Evils when you had the house. That's what it reminded me of. I haven't talked about the gameplay elements. First off, there are parts that are gonna freak you out. Like, first time you see Rachel. She's a boss in the game. You see her a couple times in the game. She is freaky. You don't see any of the old time monsters, but these new ones replace them pretty well. They're your typical monsters from Resident Evil, the newer ones. Now for the game controls, I liked them pretty much everything throughout the whole game with the controls. At the beginning it's kind of hard to get used to. It's kind of a cross between Resident Evil Operation Racking City, if you played that, and Resident Evil 6 and you move a little faster than Resident Evil 6 and there's no run button everything seems like they try to make it as simple as possible for you to get through the game and it actually works it works really well one element they also took out was the herb mixing you don't have that in this game I wish they kind of did because it brings a little more Resident Evil flavor to it but they decided to take it out it's not a big deal but quite interesting how they changed everything up there's no health bar one thing they did add is they added a lot of customization to your guns each gun can hold so much customization and once you find a weapon customization part or a legal customization part you can add that to the gun and it, it just makes for a better experience overall the gameplay itself was a very fun experience and I, had, and I found so much joy in it So for the graphics, I never played the 3DS version, but I've seen some videos on it. It doesn't look that great on the 3DS, actually. I don't know how it actually looks on the 3DS screen, but I've seen YouTube videos of it, and I've seen a lot of very bad videos of it. For the PS3 version and the Xbox 360 version, it looks amazing. I don't understand how they made a handheld over to a console and have it look this good. This is pretty good graphics. It definitely outcompetes Aliens, which was made specifically for consoles. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just have to hate on Aliens. It was such a terrible game. And this game actually has horror in it, which is really, really awesome. But overall, the graphics were great. The enemies look good. Bosses actually look scary. And there's dogs in this game. The one enemy I did not like in this game was the Hunter. It felt too much like it was from Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. And if you play that game, I just felt like the Hunter didn't look that good compared to the other enemies. And it looked like they took it kind of straight out of Raccoon City, which that game didn't really look that good. The other problem I had with the game was the load screen. They'll put a load screen in at the most random part and they'll have it for like a second. Okay, why do you even need the load screens in? This is the console version. I wonder how long they were on the 3DS and if they had as many load screens. It's kind of weird that you have a load screen just pop up for like two seconds and then boom, a cutscene and then go off to something else. The load screens were a little ridiculous, but the graphics overall were really good. One last extra thing that I forgot to put in the rest of the review is for raid mode. 
Raid mode you can play in co-op or by yourself. I did not have a chance to play in co-op because there's no one online every time I try to check because not everyone got the game early. But by myself it was pretty fun. I'm pretty sure it'll be really fun with a co-op partner. If you want to play with me, add me and I will try to play with you. Overall this is a great port, it has a great storyline, great new characters, amazing looking graphics, and a fun new gameplay. I definitely give this a 9 because it's just such a great Resident Evil game. And if you're a Resident Evil fan, go out and buy this. It's $50. It's $10 less than a new game now. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, and check out my Resident Evil walkthrough videos, and I'll see you guys later.